Hello everybody, Sai StarCraft here, and you know what I have with me? A StarCraft 2 game. BAM! This game is going to be against Vile Spanishua. Against one crusher. Vile Spanishua, the sensation as of late. Zerg player, extremely unorthodox strategy. All kinds of crazy timings. He doesn't like to get his gas right away. He likes to get uh, just insane ZVZ compositions. I'm, cert I'm sure he goes for insane ZVT and ZVP compositions as well. But man, if you haven't seen the Destiny vs. Val Spanishiwa ZVZ on Husky's channel, go check it out. It is crazy. Husky does a great job of casting it and catching everything the two players are doing. Let me just put it this way, you're going to see every single type of unit that a Zerg has in their arsenal. Thank you, uh, NYCJMZ and Dead Souls. Thank you, thank you. Yep, I'll have a video out tomorrow. Um, and here we go. Um, Val Spanishiwa is the bottom right Zerg player as the blue. One Crusher, top left Protoss player, the one with the shiny little Chrono Boost going down on this is Nexus. Of course, that means the probes will train faster. Woot. Yeah, if you're ever curious about the army counts, of course you can look in the top right, see what supply each player is at. Whoa, 13 hatchery, and already we're seeing why Spanishiwa is so fucking cool. He is part of Clan Vile, the clan that I represent. I do not play so much anymore, not as much as I used to. Maybe I'll get back into it, I don't know, I've said that many times before, but really, it's where the heart wants to go, you know, man. I just... I don't know. I don't know, man. But anyway, I am so happy to be part of Vile. Represent them. Whoa, that's a lot of drones, Spanishua. What are you doing? One crusher. Cruncher baiting a lot of drones off the patches. Did you see that, you guys? He's He selected, like, all of them and really wanted to kill that probe. Of course, that would be worth it if the probe had died, but the probe didn't die. But uh, you really have to note, this hatchery at 13 is so damn unusual. The standard is 14 or 15 hatch, but Spanishwa, maybe he's done some testing. Maybe he knows the timings better than all of us. Uh, he's been very, very powerful lately, so maybe 13 hatch is the way to go. Following it up with the spawning pool, of course. Didn't catch the timing on that spawning pool. Meanwhile, Cruncher with the cybernetic score going around. Much more standard build. Here comes the second gas as the cybernetic score is being produced, is warping in. Second Hatchery has completed. Now, keep a close eye on Spanishiwa's build. Second Hatchery finishes before the spawning pool. I mean, the timing isn't that different as far as that goes, but, uh, you know, Hatchery before the spawning pool. Very unusual. And he's getting his spine immediately. Now, the spine doesn't completely cover this, so it wouldn't surprise me to see him lay out a creep tumor with a uh, third queen, perhaps. Move the spine more uh, down here, something like that. One's out from Cruncher blocking off that choke. Now you might think, okay, I can't get this drone back, but if he actually selects the mineral patches, like so, like so, well, no. Well, if he wanted to, if he uh, was keeping better track of that drone, he could have just right-clicked on a mineral patch with it, floated right on through that zealot that was right here, and survived with it. Instead, he ran back, tried to get some more scouting. What? Oh, <laughs> he didn't actually kill the drone. This is an MVP drone. He might... No, he couldn't steal the gas. Wow, that was actually really crazy. But in the meantime, a second spine now coming down for Spinishua. And right on cue, burrowing that spine close to the choke. I have not seen this game, ladies and gentlemen. That is just called good old-fashioned prediction right there. Still no geyser. Still no geyser. 34 out of 36. This is what makes Spinishua so incredibly amazing to watch. Oh my god, I cannot get enough of this guy's games. I have watched several of them. I have not casted any until now. I saw your guys' messages. So that you wanted to see them casted, so here we go. 25 to 25 on the Harvester count. Getting a lot more minerals compared to the Protoss' minerals, but let's gas, of course. And here go- Oh, is he really going to sacrifice the Stalker just to get some scouting? I don't think I like that. He is forcing some drones from Spanishiwa to come off the line. Not so sure about this either. Five drones off the line for this long. That's a lot of money. And, you know, even if the Stalker attacks him, it takes five shots to kill a drone. One, two. And, yeah, Queen can just pick it up. He's not even getting any, any lings whatsoever. Zero lings. Oh, he's going to try to keep the Stalker running around. He might know Spanishiwa's uh, playstyle. He he knows that the Spanishiwa doesn't want to get any lings, that he can, 
you know, keep the stalker away with the queens. And so he's going to exploit that and warp some units up. Spanishua sees it, but a bit too late. Four zealots warping in. Oh my god, he needs to start panicking and placing, or uh, morphing in tons of zerglings. Four zealots, though. Is he going to move these spines up? Yes, he does. He's uprooting the spines, moving them to his main. He should be okay. However, more zealots warping in. He has no roach deck. He has no lair attack. He doesn't even have gas, so it's going to be all about queens, spines, and zerglings. Is he going to be able to defend against this? Four queens, man. Lots of transfusions. If they can tank the damage while the lings poke away, he could be okay. Spines in great position now. I think at this point, uh, Cruncher would be wasting warp-ins if he continued to warp in. So, wow. This could actually backfire for Cruncher. Four queens still running in, trying to bait some zealots. Needs to transfuse that queen. Transfuse. Yes, transfuse goes down. He needs to get the queens in the front, in my opinion, to try to bait some damage from the zealots. They're now kind of in the front, taking some damage. This queen needs to transfuse. We will see that in just a second. There we go. And all these zealots are dead. This is looking very good for Spanishua. Five stalkers, two zealots against six queens and spines and reinforcing links. Not a problem at all. Oh my gosh, this is so cool, you guys. 900 minerals, he is low on overlords. That's probably why he has such high minerals. Transfusion on the spine. One transfusion, two transfusions. Oh, this is sexy. I love it. I love it so much. This is just standard four gate from Cruncher. Oh, he lost a queen, though. Standard four gate. So much money. Now, remember, Spanishiwa wouldn't have this much money had he not lost all those overlords. So he's a bit behind in that regard. He might need an auxiliary hatchery, something like that, but he's looking fine. He's got four spines. This choke isn't really accessible anymore. Uh, he's got seven queens with tons of transfusion energy building up. Two on that one, one on that, one on that, one on that, and so on. So he is looking great. The only downside is he has absolutely no tech. He has absolutely no uh, gas, really, and he's just now getting gas. You can see the timing of his gas is a bit slow because of this aggression. Cruncher sacrificing a stalker to warp in some zealots. It does work. Is he going to bait the forces of Spanishiwa away? No, it's not going to work. Kind of a mistake there from Cruncher. Going to lose these four zealots, only killing a few lings. And down go the zealots. These stalkers just cannot push in. Spanishiwa smart in keeping his queens here. Meanwhile, Cruncher is now taking his expansion. This is a very intense game, man. This is what I love to see. Two crazy builds. Well, one lame build from Cruncher. And a crazy build from Spanishiwa just, just totally mixing things up. This guy doesn't even know what to do at this point. Mass links with no speed. Eight queens. Four spines. Queens transfusion non-stop. And, uh, you know, just now getting a lair. He got all four gases at the same time, mind you. And it's still 31 to 30. And this queen's going to get healed. There we go. Oh, he should have healed that circling. No. But I don't know if you guys saw it. We got a dark shrine coming up. Over halfway done. If he does not get a overseer, this could be bad. These uh, dark templar aren't going to be able to warp up here. Unless he sacrifices another stalker down through here. Which he might. But he can always just warp the DTs right here and try to walk on in and hope that Spanishiwa doesn't get overseers in time. Let me reposition myself here. So tech-wise, the toss is obviously very, very far ahead. I'd say unit-wise, the Zerg is ahead. He's got a lot of queens. Queens, amazing support units. One of the best support units. Oh boy, here they come. Is he going to see them? Is he going to see them? No, he does not see them. Check the production tab. There are still no overseers being produced. Now he sees it. Three overseers being produced. He needs to just make one or two with the expansion and one or two with the main. This hatchery is going to go down. He needs to send a squeeze. Transfuse, transfuse, transfuse the hatchery. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. This hatchery will be saved. Oh my god, queens are just such good utility. You can just do so much with them. This hatchery is saved because of the queens. Here comes three overlords, or overseers. He should have kept one at his expansion. Yeah. Come on, Spanish. Come on, man. Keep one at the expansion. He's going to transfuse this as well, though. It's going to be fine. Harvester count. He did lose that many harvesters. So a nice quick tag up by Cruncher into DTs after that four gate, but... Um, you know, he is holding the Zerg to two, to two base. He's forcing him to get a bit lopsided on his drone saturation. And, you know, he's containing the Zerg. So he's containing the Zerg, even though that foregate didn't work out too well. He lost a lot of warped-in units here. Didn't go too well up here. Uh, he's doing just fine. So very even game at this point, I'd say. Zerg slightly ahead, perhaps. 
and you know this Nidus network that we have up over here might change the difference. Change the difference. I don't know if that makes sense. You know what I mean. Give me a break. And here comes the overseer. This is where the Nidus comes, baby. He's gonna be Nidusing down here. He's gonna be Nidusing over here. Actually, that'd be kind of stupid. Scratch that. Maybe Nidusing up here. Nidusing over here. Lots of Nidus opportunities. Now, even if a Nidus is spotted, it can still be resourceful, you know, for transferring units. If he wants to transfer some drones up here, if he makes a base, um, you know, just just using it to attack from different sides. Even if you can't just sneak attack from behind your opponent's base. And here comes the Infestation Pit, Robotics Bay as well. Gotta keep an eye on this Overlord, Overseer. Oh, I see a knight is coming. Where are you? Oh, maybe actually right here. That'd be better. Here we go. Here it comes. Bam! Goes the Nidus. The problem with this Nidus, though, is does he have any link speed? Yes, he does have link speed. How many links does he have? Can't really tell. He doesn't have anything here. Lots of queens. Lots of zerglings. I don't know what he hopes to accomplish. Maybe just send out the links to try to kill some shit and... I don't know what he's going to do with the Queens. He needs to get that Overseer back just in case Dark Templar comes. Queens as the support DPS units making another Nidus in case the first one dies. This Nidus will also help spread the creep. And the Toss player is actually running. He's got DT. He's got a huge Toss army. Why is he not attacking that? So many Queens. Maybe that's why. Oh my gosh. This is so cool. Queens as an offensive unit. Now they aren't the best DPS. They have short range, they're pretty slow, but transfusion is so damn good when you have a 175 hit point buffer to be able to use it on. Man, this is insane. This pro I don't know about this Protoss like, backing up. I think he could have taken that. He could have killed the Lynx easily, and the Queens, you know, he could have kited. He could have just... I don't know, I think he could have killed him in a full-on fight, but he's going to let his base go down. He's content to transfer his drones to his third base. Here come a couple overseers. Is he going to make some more Nidus? Here we go. Here's the engagement. Defensors have popped out. He needs to start transfusing. It's so hard to transfuse when there's so much damage going down. He is doing a pretty good job, though. Transfusions on these queens, soaking up so much damage. In go the links. This Colossus needs to start attacking. He was just bouncing back and forth. Queens, of course, can range and nicely pick off that Colossus. Holy cow. This is so good. Oh, 9 range on the Colossi, however they don't have Thermalance, so it's 6 range. These Queens actually have 1 range on these Colossi. Look at that, that is so insane, and he still has, what, 7 or so transfusions remaining. He can continue to swarm in. Creep Doom is being placed. This Queen is like, fuck you, Dark Shrine, you are dying like the bitch you are. You can't cloak like the Dark Templars. Who needs more than 2 bases, that's the story. Not this guy. 1 Void Ray out, but Queens. Queens, man. Void Rays don't do shit against Queens. Infestors, Queens, Zerglings. Who needs anything else to win a game? And in the meantime, resources not even that high. He's been spending so well, man. Another knight is going down. There it is. Oh, yeah, I knew he'd put one there. There's the knight is right there. Oh, and the Neural Parasite insult to injury on the Void Ray, on the Colossus, on the other Colossus, bringing them up into range of these Queens and these Zerglings. Now, the first instinct of someone might be, oh my god, I took all these units, I'm going to kill Cannons and Stalkers, but no, Spanishiwa, Spanishiwa, he's going to bring them up into his army, kill them. You have to focus fire them because they won't attack on their own. And down go two Colossi and the Void Ray. And he's got to be laughing to himself, dragging this Void Ray in as well. He's got the high ground, no observers in sight. He's just, oh my gosh. 1-1 one, one as well. 32 more links, third base coming up. That was sick. That's all that I have to say about that. That was sick, man. Jesus. Now, the tide of the, the battle, the tide of the game, the uh, whatever of the game could have changed had the toss not backed off here that was just terrible he lost all his tech I don't know what he was thinking uh, was gonna happen after that but he needed to try to fight this he didn't he lost because of it he probably would have lost even if he tried to fight it but man that was an awesome game let me know what you guys think and uh, you know as always let's see salt bitches